All right, everyone, welcome back. I have a new guest here today that I'm super excited to introduce to everybody. Um, this is Tamika, and Tamika, I'm going to let you, you know, introduce yourself, tell everyone a little bit about your background. I mean, you've got a lot going on, <laughs> and then we're going to dive into a conversation just around the reality of the school year is approaching no matter where you live, what your state's regulations are, all of that, I think we're all need to be honest and face the reality that there's going to be some form, likely a virtual schooling, again, homeschooling, who knows what's gonna happen when fall and winter hit, and just start you know, talking through some strategies, suggestions, uh, things like that, that we as moms can, can prepare for as we start thinking about that. So Tamika, welcome, and why don't you tell everyone about yourself? Well, thank you so much. And oh, I, I'm so excited to be here and talking with you. I've been following you and I love the advice you shared. I'm just honored to, to be here with you. Um, but for those of you who are not familiar with me, my name is Tanika Isaac Devine. I am um, a wife and a mom. I'm also a practicing attorney and entrepreneur. And I work primarily with women leaders and working moms to help them with work-life integration strategies and leadership tips. Um, and professionally, I, I'm a practicing attorney. I'm also, I mentioned I'm an entrepreneur. I have a business, the Possibilities Institute, where I um, do speaking, coaching, and consulting. Um, and if that is all not enough, I'm also an elected official. Um, I have been uh, a member of our city council here in Columbia, South Carolina for 18 years now. Um, and it's funny, when I was first elected, I was the youngest person ever elected and uh, the first African-American female. Uh, I was single with no kids. And over my 18 years, I got married. I have uh, three beautiful children. And so I run the city, run my businesses and run my house um, and try and look flawless when I do it, but I don't always look flawless. And especially now in quarantine, I have to do something with my hair to keep it um, from going all over the place all the time. <laughs> so you have a ton of free time is what I'm hearing. You got nothing going on. <laughs> exactly. Not, not a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was listening to um, when you were interviewed on a news channel and just kind of, and I love the phrase that you use when you say work-life integration. Yes. Because right now with quarantine living, that is the reality. You know, I always talk about harmony, but I, I really love differentiating that integration because we are having to work at home, everybody at home together and how our, how we integrate as people. And then also how we integrate just with all the tasks and roles and responsibilities that we have. This is a whole different playing field than anything that any of us, I think, are ever used to. Yeah, it really is. And you know, I don't I don't believe integration is is dissimilar from harmony. It's just mm -hmm. so funny because as you know, and I've heard you talk about this, you know, so many times in this world we've been taught to try and achieve work-life balance. And that really is not achievable. And I find that so many people, oh, women and men, uh, just get so uh, frustrated and, and feel depleted because they're not achieving work-life balance. And so for me, uh, work-life integration was something that I realized when, as I started having kids and I realized with, you know, with being a public official, having my own business. And, you know, when you run your own business, you know, you're everything from the CEO to the janitor. And yep. so, you know, having a nice, fit nine to five schedule just wasn't in the works for me, but I certainly also wanted to be very present um, with my kids and intentional in the time that we spent together. So I realized that integration was just kind of the way that, you know, if mom has a community event or something and, you know, and kids can, can go, take them with me because I'm teaching them not only about entrepreneurship, uh, but also when mommy is gone, um, they understand why mommy is gone because they see what I do. So that's kind of how I got into work-life integration. But it's funny because I, I say I'm a, I was a woman before my time because I was doing it before we were quarantined. And now that everybody's quarantined, I mean, I know some people are coming out of it, but, you know, we're still, uh, everybody's having to integrate because you are working from home. You're teaching from home. Um, I, I say now I'm a camp counselor, which is new for me as well, trying to figure I out. I haven't their, thought their about that. Schedules. That is, yeah, that is a new role that we're all taking on a little bit this summer, I think. Yeah, so it's, it's all integrated in, in, in um, your day and, and how you do that is, is different for everybody. But, you know, it's kind of, 
um, gotten really interesting because I've learned and tapped into talents that I'm not sure I knew I had, or if I knew I had, I forgot about it. <laughs> so I know, you know, you were in summer now. I, I, I say that very loosely because I'm like, it doesn't feel all that day. You know, the days are kind of all running together without our usual routines, but having been through quarantine where you had your kids at home and doing virtual school. We've now had a little break of that for the summer break, but now we're gearing up for the school year starting again. I know for us, they're actually starting it almost two weeks earlier in preparation for knowing we're going to need probably longer breaks and more cleaning possibilities and all of that. When you think through strategies and things that you put in place during the first quarantine experience, I think we're all a little wiser. We've learned some things, we've tried some things, but at the same time, I'm scared to death heading into this next school year because the reality is there's, there's likely gonna be some form of a virtual learning, a homeschool. For some people, it might be full-time. For others, it might be in and out. I know our school district is talking about going to school for one week, home two weeks. Um, it, it's a lot to absorb. So what were some of the strategies, tips, things like that, that you found that you were putting into place that you know were helpful that you're thinking about taking forward into this next school year of being able to manage all the, the work responsibilities you have, the entrepreneur, volunteer, all of that, plus three kids still at, still at home. Wow. So um, I probably would say the biggest strategy um, that um, I really tapped into, it's one I try all the time, but I really tapped into was giving myself grace. Um, and when I say that, it, it is so funny because I am very, as you can probably tell with all the hats that I have, I'm very organized, very structured, um, normally. And so I like a routine. Um, I know that the routine may change from day to day, but at least I, I, I have it planned out on my calendar. So I kind of know what I, what I'm going to do when, et cetera. And that went out the door, um, with, with quarantine. I mean, the, fir the first week I, I laugh and my friends laughed at me because, you know, we were told on Friday, that kids will not come back on Monday. So we had, you know, no time. So I'm like, over the weekend, I'm like fitting out the schedule, you know, for my high schooler, for my elementary school. And I'm like, this is what we're going to do at this time. And, you know, I was like, they need structure, like they have at school, and I'm going to do it. And we did it the first day. Then the second day came and the girls, my older ones are the girls, they were fine. My three-year-old was like, ha ha, mama, you think you are in charge, but you're really not in charge. Um, and so I had to realize that the schedule that I set I had to be flexible. Um, yeah. and, I, and at first I was kind of like, oh man, I'm not getting, I'm not doing this right. But I had to give myself grace because I had to recognize this was new to all of us. And, you know, and as long as they were getting what they needed, which was the educational time, the time with me, um, then, you know, everything was going to be okay. So grace is, is a huge, huge strategy, I would say. Um, another one for me just is understanding when you work best and yeah. figuring out um, when that is and how you fit that in. So I'm more of a morning person. I like to get up early. Um, I go to bed early, but I get up early um, and I get a lot done in the early morning hours. And so um, I make sure that I am able to get up and uh, get up, you know, do my meditation time, uh, you know, do some exercising and then get into work before everybody gets up. And for me, that strategy, I, I used to do it kind of hit or miss when school was in full time, but I had to do it a lot more when we were doing the, the school time because I had to, you know, like I said, I ended up becoming a preschool teacher for my three-year-old. So I had to be there for him pretty much all during the day. So I had to do a lot more, you know, pretty much get a full day's work in in the early morning hours. And so tapping into that time that you know when you're most productive and, and, and make sure you're scheduling that time so that you can get things done so that you have the flexibility to do the stuff at home. Um, and then <laughs> the other strategy, I would say, and I think uh, hopefully most people have, have at least figured out what their technology requirements were to support the virtual school. Yeah. But what I learned uh, then that I had to know is that, you know, like internet was fine for the regular, you know, my occasional working from home and, you know, the, the video games and the streaming services. But when you are thrust into, you know, two parents working from home and two kids 
virtual schooling, we realized that we did not have the bandwidth to really support that. So technology wise, I was, you know, getting a, a booster and upgrading my router and um, having to, you know, make sure I had my uh, headphones and mic for my virtual meetings because I really wasn't used to all those. And so I think I'm better prepared for whatever happens in the fall because I've done a full technology assessment and I understand what I need to support my business and what it needs to support what I need to support them virtual learning. Um, and so we we have that down pat. My husband actually is a technology geek, so he really kind of got into putting some stuff together. Um, but strategy wise, I'd say, you know, if if you even if you you believe you're going back to school, um, be prepared for that because what we 100% know about this virus is it is so unpredictable. And, uh, you know, we might go into and start the school year thinking that things are going to be one way. And if there's another outbreak or, you know, we learn some things new about how it affects kids, because think about it, they've not really been in that school setting. And so I know a lot of the science and data is telling us kids aren't as affected. And I know that schools are kind of going on that data to make some of their decisions, but we've not been in a setting where you have, you know, 10 or 12 kids together. And so if we learn something new and they have to change back to all virtual or whatever else, you want to be prepared. So making sure that you have uh, the infrastructure in your house as far as technology set up to uh, support that um, virtual learning as well as your, what you have to do to work from home is definitely a key. I love that tip. And it's funny, it's not one I've you know, I think we've all been sharing so many scheduling and whatever, but that's a really important one. And one of the things that I, you know, I was really encouraging families early on with the quarantine was establishing a dedicated workspace for everybody in your house that wasn't together. Because at the beginning, you saw all these pictures on social media, you know, the whole family at the dining room table, side by side working. And I'm thinking, this is not good <laughs> because, you know, you're, it, it, very distracting, but I think ha adding in that layer of the technology assessment component to it as well is a really, really smart thing to be thinking about now, because uh, we certainly struggled with that with our daughter. You know, she's never had a, a computer or, you know, a place set up for her to sit that had both the technical and physical requirements of, of feeling like we're now setting into workspace time instead of play time. So you've definitely made me Think about that. I'm going to have to kind of think through our technology setup here now uh, before we head into school. The when you mentioned first the giving yourself grace, I I love that, and I think that is the best place to start. And I think you and I are very similar in terms of just being very structured, routine, morning people, get up, get stuff going. And I think it's important for people to hear. And I tell this all the time, no matter how nat you know if, if organization comes naturally to you if scheduling comes naturally to you we all got thrown a curveball i yeah. was a complete you know like you okay okay we're going virtual first thing i did i get out my calendar I'm like okay we're <laughs> gonna plan our days like i got this by day three i'm like this is a disaster <laughs> none of my plans were working none of the structure i'd put in place was a good fit for my daughter and it was a evolving learning process and so this is why i think it's so great to have these conversations so everyone can hear yet we're all struggling to figure it out but back to your first and most important point of give yourself grace to do that put a plan test it if it's not working figure out what you can tweak and just keep chipping away at it because what works for me and my family is not going to be the same routine that's going to work for you or for you know anybody out there because we all have different we work best at different times our kids are different ages all of that um and how and important really do you think that schedule is for for the family if everybody's back at home again oh i mean i think it's it's extremely important in that um again you have to understand kind of what people need and so if the schedule if you don't have at least have a skeleton of a schedule um then you might be bumping into each other especially for for my husband and I I mean so we're we're both entrepreneurs we both run our own businesses plus we're both elected officials and so we both had like meetings and so the schedule for us was even important to to even know well 
you've, he's got to have this very important Zoom meeting at this time, which means during this time, I have to be freed up just in case something the kids need. And so mm -hmm. the schedule is really important. Um, but the other thing, uh, and when you were saying about um, the, the workspaces, it, it, it dawned on me too. Also understanding even if, if you do have multiple kids, your kids are different as well. And what they need is different. Um, you know, my oldest is, she's kind of like me on structure. Um, she's not a morning person. Um, and I, but I had to realize that getting her up at regular school time, because I wanted to keep her that schedule, and especially with all the other emotional stuff that went with, you know, not being at school, not seeing your friends, it was really causing her not to be as productive because she's more of an afternoon production type person. And so when I realized that it, she could get the work done and, and get it done in a good amount of time, but it wasn't getting it done at eight o'clock in the morning. It was getting it done more at 11 o'clock in the, in the morning. So I started allowing her to get up later. My youngest is, or my middle child, she's more like me. She'll get up in the morning, uh, but she needs constant breaks. Like she'll do work for an hour and then she needs to get up and be active and do some things. So the schedule also will help you when you're identifying the strengths in your kids and what they need, because what works for one kid may not work for another. And the biggest thing is that you want them to be able to be productive. So you've got to figure out where, where are they most successful and that schedule needs to be able to support that. That's really important. Our, I know my daughter's school sent out some, you know, they're working on some sample schedules in case we have to go virtual. And, you know, similar to you, I, I, had, I had my plan of how virtual school is going to look, which is not at all how it ended up going in our house. But um, my daughter also is not a mornings are not her best time. She's a very slow starter. And I realized I could actually harness that in a way that helps me because I am a morning person. So yeah. like you, I decided, you know what, I'm going to let her sleep in like 45 minutes later than I would if we were actually getting out the door to go to school, because that just gives me 45 more minutes where I'm in my most productive time. And then it took a lot of trial and error to figure out what worked best for her was the less brain power tasks first thing in the morning for school. So even though the structure was, hey, maybe you should be jumping into your math lesson in the morning, we realized at home that was not a good fit. She needed mm -hmm. that slow ramp up time. And so we ended up creating kind of three, three pockets that was kind of rinse, repeat every day where we would look at what the you know video learning was and then go actually execute on the work and then we'd go outside immediately because screen time, you know, yeah. with sensory stuff, it can get, get overbearing. So then we'd have a good like 45 minute break. We'd go for a walk, we'd play a game, we'd do something else. Then we'd come back and kind of take phase two and phase three. So it rolled the school day out a lot longer than what I wanted, but it, it, it's what her needs are for it. And so, yeah. you know, figuring that out and just kind of understanding how your kid works best it, it may not have been my ideal situation, but I found ways to make it work really well for me on leveraging that. Okay. She's not a morning person. Well, then that's when I'm going to like you get 90% of my work done before nine 30 in the morning <laughs> so that then I could have that, you know, a little bit more flexibility as the day, as the day moves on. Yeah, exactly. And it, and it, it it's like we said, it's, it's fluid. Um, I anticipate some changes with the fall because, you know, I, they don't know what we're doing here yet, but there's a discussion about virtual school. There's a discussion about a hybrid model where they'll go in one day and then virtual next day and, and go back and forth. And then there's one where they are all face to face, but they still don't go every single day. Um, and so we have no idea what that'll be, but once we settle on that, um, I know depending on what that looks like, it'll be totally different than what we did in the spring. Um, so I know that I'm gonna to have to be flexible and figure out again, what's, what's working for them and then how do we fit that into a schedule that also works for me because I still have to work as well. And, and that's the biggest part is understanding that we have to continue what works for us. I mean, we still have to make the money to pay the bills and you know keep a roof over our kid's head. Um, and, you know, so you have to figure out what works to support your children, but also what works to keep your business running and moving forward. And if you don't have, um, you know, if you, if you don't have your own business, but you're working for someone else, um, a big thing is having that communication with 
uh, your boss or your supervisor so that they understand, hey, I'm going to get the work done, but this is probably what works best for me and see if you can come to a, a solution. Uh, because what I found and, you know, as an attorney, you know, I have to talk to clients and stuff, but I found it was easier to try and schedule clients um, even even in the evenings, client meetings in the evenings via Zoom or telephone. Um, but I made sure I communicated with them like, you know, during the day, not so much when I have a three-year-old at home, am I going to be able to have client meetings during the day? And so having that communication is really, really important too. Yeah. And I think the more we have that conversation, people are I feel like the longer this goes on, just people are getting more and more understanding. They're being more reasonable. They're being more flexible. And so I've encouraged a lot of people, just like you said, hey, reach out to your employer and just say, I'm, I'm all in, but can we work on a flex schedule that maybe my hours just look a little different than, mm -hmm. than what we're used to based on this? And I think more and more people are, you know, the one silver lining that may come out of this is just having a little bit more flexibility on work schedules as we see, hey, we're still, businesses are still able to run, employees are still able to get their, their work done if we can just loosen a little bit and, and allow for that flexibility as mm -hmm. well, which is so important right now. Yeah, I think even when we come out of this, work will look different. Um, I think the lessons that people are learning through this, they're learning that people can be very productive if you give them that flexibility and um, and work with them a little bit different. I think people are learning um, more efficient ways to get work done. Um, so work will look really, really different, which um, I also think is, um, for me personally, I think it's, it's inspiring um, as, as far as um, the value that people have on recognizing the work of women. Uh, because I have had several, um, cons I do some consulting with some corporations and I've had several uh, CEOs tell me, they were like, you know, this juggling, you know, being a mom and working, I always knew they were juggling it, but being able to do it at home, I'm getting so much out of some of, you know, some of my female uh, team members. And so I've, I've had several folks who have really looked at what does this mean as far as me, the, what does my work life look like? And they're now pursuing uh, more advanced uh, positions because they didn't think they could do it before, but now they see they really can because they've been thrust to have to do it. So that's a, that's a kind of a, a, you said silver lining. I think that's kind of an unexpected um, uh, amateur research I've done at how many women are in, in, encouraged to actually seek higher positions because they see that they can take on all these other tasks that are thrown at them. That's awesome. I love hearing that. So this, yeah, I think in another year or two, it's going to be interesting to look back and say, what changes did we see that have stayed here that are great that came out of this? Um, and I think, I think it could be a pleasant surprise to see where we land when all of this is done. Yes. Well, you, um, I just, I can't thank you enough for being here. Where can people connect with you? What is the best way to kind of see what you've got going on and get connected with you? Well, people can follow me. I'm on all social media. So if you look at Tamika Isaac Devine, I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, but also my web website is a divine life. Dot com. It's my web. Uh, it's my name, a divine life dot com. But you can always um, go there and see what I do as far as my consulting, my speaking uh, to connect with me. But you can also sign up for a free strategy session. And I'd love to offer anybody if you're trying to figure out, you know, what's the fall going to look like for me? Um, you know, can I, you know, just tap your brain on, you know, scheduling calendars, all that kind of stuff. I'd love to. And you can go to uh, freecall.adivinelife.com and get right on my calendar. And I'd love to talk with you. Oh, wonderful. And I will put all of that in the show notes. So anybody who is looking to, to get connected with Tamika, you'll be able to find that there. Thank you again so much for being here today. It was a pleasure to talk to a a fellow <laughs> you know, mom in the trenches, uh, obsessed with all things schedule and organizing and calendaring together. It's just always feels good when you can connect with others going through the same thing, you know? Well, thank you so much. And I wish y'all to have the best transition back to whatever school's going to look like in, in the next few weeks. <laughs> all right. Thank you.